So, we will continue with class D power amplifiers. We mentioned that active device here is used as a switch, in which case when it is closed voltage across that is 0 and current can be any value. When it is open voltage can be any value and current is equal to 0. Therefore, the power dissipated in the ideal switch is equal to 0 all the time. Therefore, I can now control power using an element which does not dissipate ideally any power. As long as I do not waste power, I can convert this power into useful power and therefore, efficiency could be theoretically equal to 100 percent. We will show this, how this practically can be done. So, we have a switch here which we say is connected to let us say VCC and let us say it is connected to uh, ground. When this is closed, this is open. These are complementary switches. When this is closed, this is open. When this is open, this is closed. The waveform here, V, as a function of time, is going to look like So, let us say tau is the time for which it is closed when this switch is periodically switch with a time duration t period. Then this is let us say VCC, the average of this waveform, suppose I pass it through a low pass filter. this will find out the average and that average is going to be in this case tau by t into Vcc. So, we are able to keep this on for tau, let us say therefore, this is on for tau and off for a duration t minus tau. And this is going to be off for t minus tau and that is off for tau and on for t minus tau. This is a complementary switch and therefore, this kind of waveform is what we expect at V t and V average if you take here is tau t by tau divided by t into V c c. This is amplitude this is duty cycle this is the amplitude and this is duty cycle. So, I can vary let us say if I can vary duty cycle according to some frequency this gets modulated by this information and this also is modulating the amplitude. So, this is called width modulation, this is called amplitude modulation. So, this scheme of things is really speaking called pulse width and pulse amplitude modulation. This is a type of multiplier where width of the pulse is getting multiplied by amplitude. The average of this corresponds to this. This can be very usefully used in a variety of applications for power amplification for uh, also efficient uh, converters and consequently switched mode power supplies SMPS. So, this idea is very important has gained prominence 
particularly because the switching can be done at fairly high frequencies. Nowadays, this we have power switches which are available which can operate up to 1 megahertz and therefore, the low pass filtering uh, inductor and capacitor could be made very small in size and the modulation information can occur at low frequencies. So, this is a very good scheme for uh, efficient power conversion from one form to another. So, let us therefore, use it for let us say audio power amplification something like that. Then how do we have the practical scheme? Tau should be proportional to some voltage. How do we therefore, get this duty cycle width or width modulation scheme? By using a voltage, I should be able to make the width of a pulse vary. So, first we will consider this. Next, we will consider how this average when it is uh, changing sign, when VCC changes sign, it should also change sign when this particular multiplicand changes sign. So, that kind of operation is very necessary for uh, sort of uh, efficient uh, outputting the uh, modulating information. So, let us see that. First, let us think of a scheme Assume that a waveform is available. This is a triangular waveform whose time period is T. Let's say if you have a clock with this kind of period, a square waveform with this kind of period, you can convert it into a triangular waveform by integrating. So let us say that uh, sort of waveform has a peak value of Vp and time period of T and we put a voltage for comparison, we call this V c and let us observe this output here V naught. So, let us say this is plus and this is minus. This is now acting as a comparator. This is a high gain amplifier. So, the moment this voltage goes above V c, the output will go to let us say plus VCC and the moment this voltage goes below VC, this will go to minus VCC saturation. These are power supplies. So, what kind of waveform do we observe on the screen? So, let us draw the triangle. So, this is VP, this is minus VP, this is time axis, so this is 0 this is T by 2 is T and we will just for argument sake take this as our V C control voltage. Then output V naught is going to plus V s the moment input voltage here goes above V C. So, in this range the output would have gone to plus V s and if you extend this, it would go to minus V c c like this. If I increase V c, the width of this is going to decrease. If I decrease we see the width is increased. So, this is a pulse width modulator. So, this circuit is nothing but pulse width modulator, very simple circuit. So, it uses a triangular waveform with time period T with the control voltage applied to the other terminal output being taken here. You will get a square wave. This is the output voltage here get a square wave which is going to plus v, uh, VCC 
and minus V C C is pulse width is or duty cycle this is called duty cycle tau by T is called duty cycle that is controlled by V C. How is it controlled? Let us mathematically see these two triangles are similar triangles the width of this is T by 2 the width of this is tau let us say. So, tau divided by T by 2 tau divided by T by 2 is this height divided by this. So, this height is V P minus V C divided by V P. So, this is a simple similar triangle relationship this space divided by this space is this height divided by this height. So, this will give us an equation which says okay, V uh, tau by T tau by T is equal to half into 1 minus V C by V P very important relationship tau by T is equal to half 1 minus V C by V P. So, if I really change V C right tau will proportionately change, but I want where the tau by T factor to come in such a manner that the average will change in sign when V C changes in sign. Now, the average is simply tau by T into V C C. So, average does not change sign when V C changes sign. This can be simply done by instead of connecting this to ground, this switch will connect it to minus V C C okay, instead of it being connected to ground. So, that means this voltage will go to minus V C C instead of being at ground. So, then the average will change to tau into V C C tau into V C C and this is minus V C C minus V C C into T minus tau the whole thing divided by T that is the average tau into V C C that is this area okay, and minus V C C into T minus tau this is the negative area. Okay. So, basically therefore, we have this this area and this area that is the average that divided by T is the average. So, this comes out to be we can take this now uh, V C C okay, comes out T also comes out tau also comes out. Okay. So, you can say this is 2 tau this tau and this tau 2 tau into okay, uh, 1 minus so, this will be actually let us say two tau V C C minus V C C into T by T. So, I am taking two tau V C C by T out. So, one minus okay, V C C has been taken out. So, actually speaking we will leave it at that 2 tau minus V C C or V C C into 2 tau by T minus 1. Now, 2 tau by T 2 tau by T is nothing but 1 minus V C by V P. So, we will substitute that 2 tau by T Okay, minus 1 is nothing but minus V C by V P 
into Vcc. So, if I use this kind of averaging circuit here and obtain an output voltage of this type and make this control voltage control these switch positions closing and opening is going to be controlled by this voltage here. When this is high this is closed when it is low this is open this will be open when it is high and closed when it is low. So, such a situation I get an output which is an average which corresponds to this. Uh, here we see when it changes sign okay, output also changes sign. So, if V c is a sine wave output also is a sine wave. So, you can get output power if you take the average of this waveform here. Okay. The averaging circuit therefore, has to be such that it is efficient that it should not lose any power energy in it. So, the best averaging circuit is just going to be a low pass filter combination which is going to be L and C network. So, if you are not happy with one section you can put multiple section of such uh, low pass filters and then across the load we will have only the average component appearing all the high frequency component at frequency corresponding to 1 over t will be eliminated and therefore, we get very efficient power transfer useful power transfer onto the load. Now, consider this uh, circuit this is what we have assembled out of the blocks that we have just now mentioned the triangular waveform generator gives an input to the comparator here where V c is the modulating frequency width modulating frequency the output of which is now directly controlling the switch. The same combination of complementary pair we have used as class B stage and as long as we know that this output is al always going to flip from let us say plus V c c to minus V c c we can say that the transistor is really operating in uh, switch more right. So, this when this goes to plus VCC this will be very nearly going up to plus VCC here and when this goes to minus VCC this will go up to minus VCC here. So, this these are two switches one will connect it to plus VCC another will connect it to minus VCC complementary right and for protecting uh, against uh, any accidental opening of the transistor or in between transition during certain duration plus minus V gamma the both the transistors are not conducting during that period to restrict the voltage from jumping high because the inductive current will be continuous. So, the, these are the clamping diodes protective diodes which have been put this will not allow the voltage to go too high when the switch is getting opened in between. So, this this circuit along with this low pass filter will get rid of the high frequency component the clock frequency and generate power only at the modulating frequency. So, the if we say that the switches do not dissipate any power and L and C are ideal then in this whole process of convert obtaining this power at the uh, power amplification here we have not spent any energy as far as this whole circuit is concerned assuming that all these things consume very little power okay, at the input side driver circuits we can say that the efficiency is 100 percent. Now, what are these uh, factors that will be responsible for bringing down the efficiency from 100 percent? One is this when the transistor is closed okay, the voltage across the transistor which is V c sat okay, may not be negligible it may be of the order of let us say 
uh, one volt or so for high current switching. So, this V C is at for small signal is of the order of 0 0.2 to 0 0.3, it may be pretty high because some ohmic resistance drops also occur okay, along with junction drop. Therefore, this voltage may be as high as 1 volt or so. And that is going to permit certain amount of current okay, to flow. So, the current that is going to flow through the inductor is going to be supplied by this transistor which is closed. So, that this is the power that is going to be dissipated in this transistor when it is closed. Similarly, this when it is closed during the other ha other period, this is for let us say tau, okay. during the other period the other transistor is going to dissipate power right, which corresponds to the V C is at of the other transistor okay. and so basically if you assume that the transistor power gets dissipated when it is closed this will be the total power that is dissipated in the transistor when it is closed. But when it is open, okay, the uh, this is the energy that is dissipated, and the average power is going to be this divided by t. Right. When it is open, also we have uh, this going up to let's say this is minus Vcc, and this going up to plus Vcc. So open when it is open, the voltage across this is going to be twice Vcc. So the voltage is maximum. The current is maximum when it is closed. Okay. Voltage is maximum when it is open. So, twice Vcc into the leakage current I C E naught. So, this is the power dissipated in the transistor that is supposed to be open. This leakage current even if it is very small the voltage may be pretty high. So, this may be becoming considerable again this into tau for uh, the transistor in one side and similarly the other transistor is going to be also dissipating so that divided by T. So, basically we can see that since there are two such identical transistors used right power dissipated during the entire period is going to be essentially v c is at okay into i l throughout and that dissipated during the time when it is open corresponds to twice v c c into i c e naught. So, this much power gets dissipated in the transistors. Apart from that we have when the transistor is going from on to off and off to on also some amount of power that is going to be dissipated. This under the assumption that when the transistor is going from off to on this is when it is off voltage across it and let us say voltage across it is V C is at when it is closed. This is the case of the transistor going on off here it is on. When it is on the current is very high and is going to 0 or I C E naught when it is off. Here it is I L. So, we have already established the power that is spent here as well as here for the transit. But this assumes that it takes almost 0 time for it to go from off to on. 
but when you are working at very high frequencies this time for it to go from off to on is not negligible. So, this becomes comparable to the time period okay. In such a situation we can assume actually it will not be linear like this that it is linear. So, it is going from on to off current is going from full to almost 0 and the voltage is going from uh, Vc is at to twice Vc see right and it is moving linearly okay. So, this is the time this is the rise time or fall time this happens okay also at the other end and it comes like this. this will go like So, both at the rise time and the fall time in a time period it happens. So, we can evaluate the power that gets dissipated in the transistor when it is active okay. Here in this range transistor is active okay. So, in both these ranges. So, if you take this kind of waveform and solve the problem okay in terms of finding out again the product put down the waveform for this this waveform you can put down okay for example i can ignore this assume that this is very nearly zero compared to twice cc see this is very nearly zero compared to this okay then the voltage waveform will be something like if you start with this as zero okay vt divided by uh, this is twice Vcc is the peak that divided by Tr is the slope into T is the equation for that. So, this is the equation for this line twice Vcc divided by Tr is the slope okay, into T whereas, the other one is going to be 1 minus. Okay. So, we can put it as I L by T r that is the slope again okay, into T okay, I l minus I l into T by T r at T equal to 0 it is I l at T equal to T r it is 0. So, this is the voltage waveform this is the current waveform. So, voltage into current is the instantaneous value of power this into d t okay, 0 to T r okay, is the energy and that okay, is the energy that uh, that is what is important okay, that into something like 2 because it is happening over the time period twice. Right? So, that whole thing divided by T is the power that is dissipated for the transistor when they are going to be in the active region during rise time and fall time. So, this can be evaluated I am going to leave this as an exercise this is an integral which you can solve and this is the power that is dissipated in the transistors okay, when the transistors are going to be in the active region during rise time and fall time. So, all these powers must be added okay, in order to evaluate the total power that is dissipated in the transistor. Apart from this we have the power that is dissipated in the resistance of the coil, power that may be dissipated in the capacitor resistance loss okay. All these things will bring down the efficiency and it is typically something between let us say uh, 80 to 85 that normally is good enough efficiency for class D power amplifiers. We have understood a large number of circuits amplifiers, power amplifiers, oscillators, sinusoidal oscillators, non sinusoidal oscillators etcetera. Now, we are ready to build systems and the important system in circuits negative feedback system or control system that 
we would call control circuit. Under this category, one of the most useful circuit system is what is called voltage regulator. It may be uh, our DC voltage regulator, it can call it. We can have AC voltage regulation, which we will call it as automatic gain control system or automatic volume control system. So, when we say voltage regulator, normally we mean DC. We can also build okay, AC voltage regulators okay, in our electronic system, that is amplitude stabilization of oscillators. Okay. Uh, then um, uh, let us say AGC systems, AVC systems, these are all AC voltage regulators. So, we will discuss how to build these control circuits, where something is required to be maintained constant. In this case voltage, DC voltage or AC voltage, it could be current also, then they will become current regulators. So, all these control circuits are pretty simple in the sense you want something to be maintained constant. In a voltage regulator, you want output voltage to be maintained constant. In a current regulator, you want current to be maintained constant. In an AC regulator, you want amplitude of the AC voltage to be maintained constant. In speed regulation, you want to maintain the speed of a motor constant. Okay. So, these are all control circuits. Position you want to maintain the position of a system at a particular point, position control, servo controllers these are called. So, we will discuss such systems that can be built using circuits. Basic building blocks of this voltage regulator for example, is going to be a voltage reference. Now, that is the characteristic of any control circuit. If it is AC voltage regulation also, we need a voltage reference that is normally a DC voltage reference. Even if it is speed, we need a reference that can be a frequency or a DC voltage depending upon the system. Okay. So, a reference forms an important aspect of the basic building blocks of these controllers. In this case, since it is a DC voltage regulator, we would like to have a DC voltage reference with which we are comparing and seeing whether whatever we want to maintain constant is remaining constant. Right? We have to know, compare and know whether it is changing. Right? So, this comparison, comparison is done by what is called a comparator, that is a voltage comparator. It tells you when the what you want to maintain as output voltage is changing. Okay, with reference to the reference voltage. So, it gives an indication. Correspondingly, I can control something. In the case of maintaining output voltage constant, there will be something coming in series. This is the active device in this case, a transistor. This is called series pass transistor. This is coming between output and input in series. Okay. And this series pass transistor is the a one that will have its voltage controlled by this comparator output such a way that output voltage is maintained constant. So, these three things form a basic components of the so called voltage regulator, which is one of the largest volume sales as far as uh, circuits are concerned. Integrated circuits are available now as fixed voltage regulators or variable voltage regulators. Fixed voltage regulators may primarily meant for your PCs and other things. Okay. These are called three terminal voltage regulators, where the output voltage is fixed. Okay. And uh, variable voltage regulator, which is five terminal voltage regulator IC, wherein you can design the circuit such a way that voltage output can be anything from some value to some other value. Okay. So, let us therefore, understand how we can maintain the output voltage constant, the basic scheme. So, assume that this is the black box and this is the output voltage, DC output voltage and this gets an input voltage which is unregulated, unregulated input voltage. 
So, output regulated. In between we have to put something. So, let us assume that there is a common terminal. This is the common terminal between the input and output. And I put the series pass transistor in series. So, this is I mean I am assuming that I am using a NPN transistor. Right? So, obviously input voltage minus the drop here is the output voltage. So, if I want the output voltage to be maintained at let us say 10 volts, I should have something which tells me that it is going to exceed 10 volts also. So, I want a reference. For the reference, I can use what is called a Zener diode. This we have already earlier seen, a Zener diode. Okay. So, we know about Zener diodes. We have discussed this earlier in the first part of the course. If a Zener diode gets, let us say, this V i unregulated this voltage and I put a current limiting resistance here. So, that the current in the zener is above the NIC value, but below the maximum value then the voltage across the zener is a constant V z depending upon the uh, requirement I can select whatever V z I want. So, I am going to put this at the input let us say. So, this is V z. This I will select depending upon let us say the output voltage I want to maintain as constant. So, simply I can now compare it with okay, portion of the output voltage. I take a sample of the output voltage so what will be the voltage here R 1 by R 1 plus R 2 times V naught. I compare this voltage with this. This is V z, this is R 1 by R 1 plus R 2 into V naught. So, and the output of this I connect it to this. So, that the base current of this is going to control the drop across this in such a manner that if this is a negative feedback circuit now this is an op amp okay the output is somehow coming back to the input so if this is a negative feedback circuit as it is shown then this voltage should be same as this voltage okay this is a nuller this voltage is zero so that means this comparator will work this is the comparator here the op amp is being used as a comparator work in such a manner as to adjust this voltage so, that the output voltage V naught into R 1 by R 1 plus R 2 equals V z. Okay. So, V naught is 1 plus okay, R 2 by R 1. So, this is a nice voltage regulator for you. output voltage is independent of the input. So, obviously, this op amp has to be biased. So, how do you get this is higher potential and this lower potential is grounded. So, here the op amp is being used with input voltage as the higher potential connected to normally a place where V c c is connected minus V c c point is connected to ground. So, this is a self contained unit. So, this is connected to V i, this is connected to ground and the output of the op amp is going to be 
much above ground because V naught is 1 plus R 2 over R 1 into V z. So, this is what is called operating the operational amplifier with single supply. So, this circuit is going to be exactly same as what we had earlier given. Let me draw this circuit. the other way. So, this is really my op amp because you can consider this as the op amp same supply voltage as the input okay collector is connected together only thing is here we are giving V i and then deriving from V i the input which is given to the plus terminal and output of this is getting feedback from this output of the op amp so if you consider this as an op amp this whole circuit is nothing but an op amp circuit working with single supply okay and negative feedback to an extent of r1 by r1 plus R2 times V0, the load is connected here. So, this is nothing but a non inverting amplifier because now the input to the non inverting amplifier is Vz. So, obviously, Vz is amplified as Vz into 1 plus R2 over R1. This is nothing but what we have earlier discussed as a non inverting amplifier. Only thing is the current handling ability of the op amp may not be that high. Right. We, can, we could have as well used the op amp itself for this regulator. Right. So, instead of that the current handling ability of the circuit is enhanced by using a current amplifier. This is the op amp output current. This current is beta plus 1 times higher. So, by using discrete transistors along with op amp you can build any regulator suitable for any large amount of current. Okay. So, if you think that this maximum current of the op amp is 20 milli amperes and beta of the transistor is 50, 20 into 50 that is 1 ampere regulator you can build by using a transistor whose current rating is greater than 1 ampere. Okay. If you think that the transistor rating is not greater than 1 ampere then you will connect another transistor right this transistor is not adequate okay so i want higher current rating you will connect these transistors in darlington pair to boost up the rating of the regulator so these are all current amplifiers so you will see a pyramid like structure here for boosting up the current of the regulator right the emitter of this is connected to the base of this emitter forms the output so this kind of arrangement is always resorted to while building regulators. So, the series pass transistor which is this okay, is coming between input and output and this can be put in Darlington pair in order to boost up the current rating of the regulator and the design of the regulator is going to be flexible here because V z if it is given you can find out 1 plus R 2 over R 1 to suit your application let us say Vz is 5 volts and V naught you want is 10 volts then this has to be a factor of 2. So, if Vz is given to you then you can always find out 1 plus R 2 over R 1 required for obtaining the desired output voltage okay, as the constant output voltage. It is fairly independent of input variations. Now, is it really true? that this circuit is going to function satisfactorily without giving any variation at the output when V i varies. Up to what extent is it valid? All these are factors that we have to determine. That means, how do we assess the performance factor of a regulator? So, these are the factors that have to be understood.
in understanding regulators, right. So let us see what are the basic definitions. If I plot V0 of this as a function of I L, I L is the load that I am going to connect across this, this is the load. This may be a radio receiver or a television receiver or something, right. So, which needs the regulated supply, so that is the load. If I plot V0 versus IL, this should be constant. This is really speaking Vz into 1 plus R2. This characteristic is called regulation characteristic. Strictly speaking, okay, this will not be constant, this will have some kind of slope downwards. Okay. So that is what we want to find out, the regulation characteristic of this. Up to what extent can I go on? There must be some maximum limit, okay, I L max, up to which I can go on because this is going to dissipate power, okay. Input power is nothing but V input uh, that is input power is nothing but input voltage into input current. Input current is here, input voltage is this. Output power is obviously output voltage into output current. Obviously, output power is less than input power because input voltage is here, something is dropped here and rest of it is appearing here. Therefore, efficiency is going to be uh, V0 I0 by VI I. I. Efficiency of a regulator is an important part because normally these regulators might supply current to large number of circuits and therefore the current of operation may be of the order of amps. Therefore, I0 is going to be of the order of amps, I, I is also going to be of the order of amps because I L is the major part of current which is going to flow through this. Rest of the current okay, is only for biasing purposes and therefore I in a good design, I0 is very nearly equal to I, I in a good design. So, efficiency is going to be very nearly equal to V0 by V. So, if I want to regulate a voltage where the input is changing from let us say 5 to 10 volts, I want the output to be 4 volts. Output voltage has to be always less than the minimum voltage at the input. Okay. So, input is changing from 5 to 10 volts, output has to be 4 volts. Okay maintain constant. At any given time input voltage has to be greater than uh, output voltage. So, the best efficiency I get is 4 by 5 and the worst efficiency I get is 4 by 10. So, it might just get stuck at V i equal to 10 and I will be operating only at the worst efficiency situation of about 40 percent. Okay. Rest of it is dissipated in the transistor. So, this kind of regulator is not a very efficient scheme okay, because output voltage is always less than the input voltage number 1 and output voltage should be made less than the least value of input voltage. That means, when the input voltage is very high, okay, efficiency is very poor. So, we will discuss more about the performance factor associated with this regulator in the next class.